You look a sight. Oh, thanks very much. Can't even get up the stairs to have a shave. Well, you could do that down here. And will you fetch me old kit? It's in the bathroom. No, I know where it is. Sorted is it? Just a bit. Can you put kettle on? Yeah, of course. They should have stopped it, you know. I know. I mean, the police were there. I warned them. I knew something was going to happen. They have seen hiding ahead of the Dingle family for years. Yeah, well, they've certainly come out of hibernation now, haven't they? Got the scars to prove it. Yeah, thanks for looking after our David, by the way. Tell you the truth, I wish I hadn't bothered. I'm just sick to death of coming second best all the time. It's one thing after another. This family is cursed. Oh, God. You're not going on about that again. Well, what do you call it? I call it feeling sorry for yourself. I call it sitting around whinging when you could be pulling your weight around here. What, with a busted ankle? Oh, I'm talking about before that happened. You've been like this for months. I mean, I'm trying to run a farm, make a living and keep a business going. My wife's away, my baby's ill, could be dying. And all you can do is sit around and moan about the curse of the bloody Sugdens. You know what the curse is, Joe? You are. You're the curse. Here, shaving kit. I trust you can manage to hop across to the sink and do it yourself. I've got work to do. See you, Joe. I've spoken to Ma. All right. How is she? Fine. I told her to expect a visitor. Who? You. Well, there's no point you being here while that gets better. And I have enough to do without being a nursemaid to you, so you might as well pack your bags and go and keep Ma company. Looks like I don't have much choice, doesn't it? That's right. You took me out? If you want to look at it that way. Well, I'll be very happy to go, then. Because I'm sick of working myself to death here for little money and even less gratitude. Being with Ma would be a real joy compared to sharing this place with you. Yeah, well, I'm glad you said that, because that's exactly how I feel. Good. I'll go, then. What, now? Yeah. I wouldn't stay here a minute longer than is necessary. Right. What? Tell me what happened. Oh, we just had a bit of a row, nothing new. Jack says you're leaving. That's new. I'm not leaving. We just got a bit steamed up. Said a few things, best left unsaid, but I'm not leaving. He said that uh, he's offering the Glovers Mars Cottage. You're going to have that lot moving with you? No. I'm going to be in your place. Where will I be? In Spain. I've told you it was just a, a heat of the moment thing. I didn't mean it. Well, maybe it'd be best if you did go. I see. You're trying to get rid of me and all, are you? No, I'm thinking of you, Joe. You've been so defeated recently. I don't know, it's not like you. I don't like it. So much has happened since that plain fellow has. Just been stumbling from one crisis to another. Sometimes we need to take a good long look at our lives. Meaning? Maybe it'd be best if you did go away. Leave Emmerdale. This farm's my life. I spent the whole of my adult life trying to prove it isn't, but it is. And it always will be. Wherever you are, you'll always be able to come back. Yeah, well, one thing is for sure. Jack doesn't need me here. We just seem to rub each other up the wrong way. I always have done. And, uh, can't nurse made me with this on and run the place on his own. What are you doing? <sighs> Ring the airport. The flight's at eight and I have to check in by seven. Yeah. Right. Thanks very much. Bye. How are you going to get to the airport? Well, it's funny, there's this um, new thing, you know, where you ring a number, a man comes along, you pay him some money and he texts you. It's called a taxi. <laughs> yeah, very funny. What about the other side? There's taxis in Spain as well, you know. <laughs> How are you going to manage with all your bags? Ah, uh, well, I'll think of something. You don't have to. 
I'm going to come with you. Don't be silly, you can't. Yes, I am, just for a few days. I'll make sure you're all right and I'll be able to see Annie. Rachel. No arguing, I've made up my mind. Rachel. Look, uh, I've never said this to you before, but if, uh, if I had a daughter, I mean, a daughter of my own, I hope she'll be like you. Oh, ah, oh you hurt me leg. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> The uh, flight's at eight. Oh, right. So I'll uh, go and pack. I'll run you to the airport. No favours, Jack. Well, it's the least I can do. Oh. Got to make sure I've gone, eh? <sighs> Joe, I'm sorry. The things I said, I shouldn't have. But I'm under a lot of pressure at the moment. Well, you know what it's like. I still shouldn't have shot my mouth off like that. I'd rather you didn't go. Jack, listen. I've realised something this morning. Ever since the day I was born, I've been living in your shadow. I, I've been trying to be better than you, because that's the way my and Dad put it. You were always brighter than me. You're always quicker, stronger. I mean, nothing's changed. But he beat me on one score. How's that? You've got more hair. <sighs> yeah, well as maybe, but look, seriously, if I was to stay here, I'd always be competing against you. I'd be trying to be better than you. I mean, hardly a week goes by without us rowing about something, and all that's got to change. I've got to go away and sort it out. I mean, all of it. It won't be the same without you. Have a good rest and come home soon. I'll miss you. Come here. How are we going to get to the airport? We'll get a taxi. What? Yeah, I'm going with him, just for a couple of days. Yeah, well, that's daft. Why pay out money when I can take it? But you've always said you're up to here with work. Well, I am. Well, don't be so obstinate. Obstinate? Me? Well, that's a good one. 